Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a radical system. Radical equations are fun to solve and radical systems are even more fun to solve. So let's get started. From the first equation, I'd like to isolate, I'd like to isolate the square root of x. So let's go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to isolate square root of x, I'll write it as 3 minus the square root of y, and then I would like to square both sides. Let's go ahead and do that. So my goal here is basically to get rid of some of the radicals at least. So this is going to give me x equals 9 minus 6 times the square root of y plus y. Now let's leave it at that and then see what we can do with the second equation. This is my first one and this is my second one. And I'm going to be doing something similar obviously. Let's go ahead and isolate square root of x plus 5 there. So let me start by that. Square root of x plus 5. And I'm going to write it as 5 minus the square root of y plus 3. Okay, so that's going to be 5 minus the square root of y plus 3. And then again, I'm going to be squaring both sides here. And that's going to give me something nice. Let's see what happens. So this should give me x plus 5 is equal to 25 minus 10 times the square root of y plus 3 plus y plus 3. Okay, now let's simplify this a little bit. Obviously, we do have... 5 here, so 25 plus uh, 3 is going to be 28. When I subtract 5, it's just going to be 23. So I can go ahead and write it as x equals 23 minus 10 times the square root of y plus 3 plus y. So on one hand, I have this equation, x by itself, and then in the second equation, pretty much, I have the y by itself, I mean x by itself again. So I have this one, and I have this one. Now what that's supposed to mean is, since they're both equal to x, I can set them equal to each other, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I'll set the 9 minus 6 root y plus y equal to 23 minus 10 times the square root of y plus 3 plus y. Now one of the things that happens here is basically the y's are going to cancel out, right? We can just go ahead and cancel them out, and then we end up with the radicals only. So let's go ahead and put these radicals on the same side. But what I'd like to do is I don't want to actually put the radicals on the same side. I want to isolate one of the radicals. So why don't we just go ahead and leave the negative 6 root y here and then subtract 9 from both sides. That's going to give me 14 minus 10 times the square root of y plus 3. Great. Now, what, what I'd like to do at this point is take this expression and then simplify. So we can divide everything by 2. So that should give me negative 3 times the square root of y is equal to 7 minus 5 times the square root of y plus 3. One thing that to remember about radical equations and systems is that when you find the answer, you have to check to make sure that they satisfy the original equation because we may get extraneous solutions due to the squaring both sides. So let's go ahead and square both sides again, right? And this will help us actually get rid of some of the radicals. And then we're going to be doing that again. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. This should give me 9y is equal to 49 minus 7 times 5 times 2 is going to be 70 times the square root of y plus 3. And if you square this expression, it's just going to be 25 times y plus 3. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this expression as much as we can. So what I, one thing I can do is basically I can just isolate the square root of uh, 70 here. 70 times the square root of y plus 3, I mean. Bring the 9y over. So I have 25y minus 9y. That's going to give me 16y, right? And then from here, I should be getting 75. 25 times 3 would be 75. And then I'm supposed to add the 49 to it, right? So 75 plus 49 is just going to be 124. So I'm just going to add that to the 16y. Okay. And again, this expression can be simplified because we can divide everything by 2 one more time. And I think that's going to be helpful. 35 times the square root of y plus 3 is equal to 8y plus 62. Now, at this point, I would like to square both sides again one more time, right? And let's go ahead and do that. And this should get rid of all the radicals. Now, 
what is 35 squared, right? 35 squared is actually, there's a shortcut for that, three times four equals 12, and you just add a 25. Hopefully you know that method. Even if you didn't, you could just square it. 1,225 multiplied by y plus three equals, let's see what happens on the right-hand side, 64y squared. Plus. Now, we're going to multiply 8 times 62 times 2, which is going to be 16 times 62, right? And that is going to equal 992y plus, and then you have to square 62, and that is going to be 3,844. These are very large numbers, but don't worry, at the end, everything is going to simplify. Okay, let's go ahead and distribute this. This is going to give us 1,225y plus 3,675 is equal to 64y squared plus 992y plus 3,844. Now, if you put everything on the right-hand side and get a quadratic, it's going to look like the following. 64y squared. So I'm supposed to subtract the 1,225 from the 992. That's going to give me a negative 233y and then I should be subtracting the 3,675 from 3,844, and that should give me a 169, and that should equal zero. Now, what is this equation going to look like? And at this point, you, it may look like a perfect square to you, like 8y minus 13 quantity squared, but that's not the case. It's a little different. But one thing to notice here is that if you add the coefficients, you're going to get zero. What that's supposed to mean is that y equals 1 is a possible solution. Isn't that awesome? You used this idea before, remember? If the sum of the coefficients is 0, then x equals 1 or y equals 1 is always a solution. So in this case, y equals 1 is a solution. And the other solution, you don't have to really use the quadratic formula. Come on, who is going to square 233, right? Instead of that, you can just use Vieta's formulas, remember? Vieta's formulas are awesome, and there's a separate video that I will, you know, just include the link down below. But we also used it in the previous video. That idea is actually very powerful. So Vieta's formulas tell us that the product of the roots is C over A. In this case, it's 169 over 64. But since one of the roots is 1, then the product of the roots is actually equal to one of the roots. So the other root is actually going to be then... 169 over 64. So we got the y values. Let's go ahead and find the x values, and then we're going to test our values in the original equations, and then we'll be done. So these are the y values, and of course, you can go ahead and simplify uh, the expression, like just plug these in. For example, if y is equal to 1, if you remember the original equation was square root of x plus square root of y is equal to 3, if you replace y with 1, you should be getting x equals 4. And if you replace y with 169 over 64, if you square it, that's, you're going to get 13 over 8. Subtract that from 3, and you're going to be getting x equals 121 over 64. Now, when you plug these values in, obviously, be, well, because it's how we found the x values, but they satisfy the, one of the equations, and it, they definitely satisfy the other equation as well. Therefore, these are going to be our valid solutions. Let's go ahead and write it as a solution set. So my first solution is going to be 4, 1, and the other solution is just going to be 121 over 64, 169 over 64. And so this system has only two solutions, and this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video at the same time. Until then, be safe, take care. And bye-bye.